way. Um, that was a very fun seminar over there. And thanks um, for the previous speaker. And right now we are diving to a new topic. Hope everybody's not too tired to join me. Let me share my screen real quick. And in my session, I need everybody to join me and please type in um, the thought you have. And it will be, I hope the whole session can be, feel like a game. So can everybody see my screen okay? Just to make sure. Okay, alrighty, let's do this. Recording in progress. Okay, so first everybody, have you tried any VR, AR, or AI devices or apps? If you tried, tried one or two, type A. If you tried many of them, B. Haven't tried any of them, C. Okay. All right. Uh, Peter said A. Okay, a lot of people A. Tried one or two. Okay. Oh, some people C. Okay, because I'm reading everybody's text really, really fast. So if I pronounced anyone's name wrong, just bear with me. Um, I try to say everybody's name when I uh, talk with you. Okay, Donna said C. Okay, great. So we have someone who tried one or two. No one has been tried many of them yet. Okay, question number two. Do you think using VR, AR, AI in teaching can motivate the learners? Okay. A is yes, I do. Okay, sorry about the typo on the screen. Okay, so the answer A is yes, I think so. B is I have some doubt. C is I disagree. I have some doubt. Okay. A and B. I think so. Might be some benefit, some doubt. Okay. Okay. But no one is, so, so far, no one is strongly disagree with us. Okay. Alrighty. So before I start to talk about all the engaged learning with VR and all these technology, let me introduce who I am. My name is Siren Wan. I am the CEO of Elite Link Education. So my relationship with VR and AI and um, AR is I designed some VR and AI cur curriculum on different VR goggles and different learning platforms. So if you take a look at this picture, this is actually a leadership program that I designed. You can use Oculus Go. When you put on the VR goggle, you can choose your avatar and get into the room, do a training. Either it can be a trainer or your manager or a virtual trainer, which is not a real person. But you can also do this with a real person and then practice in different scenario. That's one curriculum that I designed on the VR platform. Another very interesting curriculum that I designed is a diversity training. So basically you can, v you can wear the VR goggle and you can be another person. That can be a different gender, can be a different ethnicity, can be different nas um, nationality for an hour or one day. Say uh, a guy can be a woman in a meeting for one hour or an international can be a US employee for one day or an employee can be the boss for one day. What do you think of that? Do you want to try that? Or the boss can be the employee for one hour and see different scenarios. So basically that was a diversity training curriculum that I designed. Um, and the company who tried with it had a lot of fun with it. And the empathy building was almost instantly. Everyone's like, oh, okay, I feel it now. That's how people feel, you know? So um, that was a fun relationship between me and VR curriculum design. And I also 
delivered a lot of speech about using AI in different teaching scenarios. So the AI here uh, is basically like natural language processing, similar or sort of similar sense of technology uh, I'm talking about. So it's not like the ultimate smart AI. All right. Um, OK. OK, so thank you um, for. Corner said sounds cool. Thanks. So I'm trying to see two screens here, so bear with me. All right. So uh, briefly about my company. My company, except for design different curriculum for different companies and schools, we also help students to apply schools and do career coaching for the high schoolers and uh, someone who is in early in their career. So that's what I do and what my company do. Okay, so, so much about me. Let's take some news. I know a lot of you lately have heard metaverse, NFT, right? Everybody heard those trending words, NFT, metaverse, anyone, anyone? Okay, yes. Yeah, I saw a lot of people say yes. Okay, so here is one story for you guys. Nike recently announced that they will have downloadable shoes and clothing that they sell for the virtual world. How do you feel about that? Will you buy the trendy Nike shoes for the virtual you in the virtual world? It's funny when I heard the news, some companies are way ahead of us, you know, while people still trying to figure out what is NFT. And some of us still never even tried a VR goggle. And yet some companies are like, yes, we are entering the metaverse right now and we'll sell, we are selling virtual shoes, virtual clothing. It's like you're not even fashionable enough for the real life. And right now you're worried about, whoa, what's my avatar in the virtual world is wearing today. That's where we are now. There is a gap between the development of some of these phenomena and how normal people or how us react to it. So, oh, a lot of people say no. I would not buy this virtual shoes or virtual clothing. Yes, that's how I feel. I mean, I'm still worried about what should I wear today? And I don't have like the time for what's my virtual avatar would wear, right? But it's interesting, it's happening and not just Nike. So my company next month will launch our virtual office, which means everyone can work online in our virtual office with our avatars. We will see how that goes. Sometimes it can be just a cool idea. Sometimes it can be really fun. So I will keep you guys updated. All right. So today I have a big topic for everyone. Like how would you use VR, AI, AR for work or learning? You don't have to answer me right now because I'm going to introduce to you guys some very fun and most importantly, free tools to try. So after today's session, you have a lot of free stuff you can play with. And I hope everyone can give me feedback. You can, you guys can, you know, email, email me or find me on LinkedIn later. So let me know after you tried all those fun tools or apps I introduced today, how do you feel? Will you really use it? Or you think it's just some trending sleek app that looks fun, but not really helpful. Okay. So like I just said, um, some of the companies like Facebook, they already have their virtual office and my company is trying to do the similar thing. Um, basically just let everyone work remotely to have the sense of community that we are working together and trying to smooth the work um, remotely. But where are we now? Let's see, where are we now? I'm going to play a video. This is where some of the company is doing now. And it's at least it's happening at Facebook. So this is actually happening right now. 
from a simple 2D photo, you get a super realistic avatar. You can create these project rooms, kind of like a 3D version of Zoom meets Slack. Pull up all the kind of traditional content that you're used to, organize your thoughts. Spatial gives you like a visual, virtual way to bring all that together. Oculus is investing so heavily. Okay, so what do you guys feel like this? Feel about this? You know, like you are sitting in your own room, but once you wear the VR goggle, you can have your computer anywhere you go. Um, it's real your computer, but you don't actually need to open your laptop or your desktop. So that was part of it, and you are co-working with other people virtually. You have whiteboard, you can pull up the right way, and you can get a 3D model right away in the virtual world. And you can have Zoom meeting inside of the virtual world, which is what are we doing now, but maybe fancier or more interactive because we are doing the video chat, but we can also do the live chat inside of the virtual room and pull up like a VR or AR object, 3D object right in front of your eyes right away. So that's our some companies are already doing this now and some of the big firms um, uh, are recently are uh, bought a lot of like more than 5,000 of Oculus Go for their new employee onboarding training. So this is the industry are shifting drastically towards using VR at work, which is pretty new because two years ago, I designed an English learning curriculum for VR and used for some Chinese high school and international schools. Uh, even at back then, it was a really cool and new idea that uh, the school are using it for teaching English. Okay, yeah, uh, someone said, looks cool, I would be willing to try it. Okay, all right, so next, I'm going to introduce you to a game. Who doesn't like a game, right? I tried a lot of AR, VR game, and some of them, good. Some of them, awesome. Some of them are normal. This one is free. You can download it right now, um, but I prefer if you download this after my session. Um, this game called Avo. So basically, it's avocado. The purpose of this game is teaching kids to rec to learn some basic scientific knowledge, uh, recognizing the spatial like um, setting, understand how space work. That's the uh, purpose of designing this game. But as the first time I tried it, I actually designed an activity with it. Okay, I will show you how this game works first. Hi there, I'm Billy, and this is my colleague, my hero, and my best friend. Avo. This is Avo. <laughs> You're about to go on such an adventure. There's science, there's teleportation, there's fruit, there's bad guys, there's time travel, and you'll be the... Okay, so basically... Basically, you can, this, you can use this app to teach kids about space, some very basic scientific knowledge, but Interestingly, after the first time I play this game, I find it very, very, very exciting because the storytelling, um, the visual effect, and I use it for one of my meeting with adult. I use it as an icebreaker activity because this app has an AR function. It can actually basically have that avocado in your room if you use your phone. So I use this as an icebreaker activity as everyone in the room stand up, pull up their phone and find the avocado. And the moment you meet someone, talk to that person. So I try to use it in a session that as a little activity. 
it was fun because it was an afternoon session. Everyone was super tired and sleepy, so somehow this activity wake everybody's up because it's new, right? So after that, I started to think maybe different AR app, except for its initial purpose of teaching kids about the scientific knowledge, facts. You can also use it in so many different ways, and I started to do a lot of research about different apps, different software, and how can I use it for in class or online teaching and hybrid mode, of course. That's why today I'm here to share a lot of the stuff that is free that you can use. Another so here another similar app with this is Google Expedition. This one is also really good, and the Round Me. It's slightly different because this one, the the reason I really really like the Oval one is because it has storytelling, right? That part is also fun, adventure storytelling, and the Google app, um, the Round Me. Basically, you can use it to create a virtual tour to somewhere, which is also interesting. Thinking about、um, you are teaching about culture. Right, company culture or intercultural communication, and you use this to create Paris in your room while you teaching. That was fun.、Uh, sometimes I remember one session. I also use AR to create a portal that everyone can just open their phone and create the place that they want to go right away. So that's also interesting. So basically, after I do that, everyone was fully engaged in the conversation. Okay, so after this session, will you want to try this game? If you want to try this game, type yes. I want to try. Okay. Oh, thanks everyone for answering my question. Yeah, and Jenny said yes. Juliet said yes. Okay, I encourage everyone to try this game, and if you find it out, like. Other creative way to use this game? Please let us know. I just really curious about how everyone else would use this. Okay, the next one. So the next one I tried and I think it's really good. It's called 3D Bear. So just、um, a disclaimer: none of the app in the session I talk about sponsored me. So it's. No advertisement. It's all done by my research that I used it and I like it. That's why I am recommending them. So this one, three D Bear, basically you can create a hybrid mode、um, of creating AR with the real settings. The picture you're looking at right now is a lab, a college lab. Because of last year, a lot of people start to work remotely. Um, some people only limited number of people can work in the lab for the same time. So in this lab, the professor actually created this virtual working session online using the, this app, and everyone can mark their work, and say if I am in the lab and Juliet is not in the lab, Juliet say,、uh, Juliet can tell me, Serene, can you check my work using number? When you click on the number, that's the work progress. So that's how I can help Julia to check her experiment while she cannot get to the lab on that day. What do you think about this? Will you use it for your training for your work, or will you create something with it for teaching? Because I know some of、um, some of the audience today are actually scientists, and you definitely need to work in the lab or work with someone in the lab. So that's why I picked this example. I think it's somehow helpful. Maybe seems better for technical space. Uh、mm-hmm. huh.、Um, Jenny said, "I don't really understand it." 
Julia said, need to think about how to use it in the L and D space. Okay, so this is one example that you create. For example, like your office, you can mark where everyone's work progress is. And when you click on the office, the object, it can show the work progress. This is just the one example you can use this 3D bear. Uh, you can turn a non 3D picture, 2D picture into a 3D. So that's the basic, basic function of this app. But this college actually turned it into a next level, made it super sophisticated. That's why um, someone said it doesn't really fully understand this. But let me say it, the basic function of this app is basically creating 3D object or turn 2D picture into 3D picture. So if I say it that way, it's easy to understand. Okay, yes. I got you, Jenny. Okay, the next one, the name is actually Metaverse. Um, this one is very straightforward. Basically, you can create your own 3D object in this app and you can present it or you can sort of made it show up in your room right now. Because I know some of us are sitting in a classroom physically and using this app, probably you can create a 3D version, like a AR version of me standing in front of you if you are using your phone. So basically you can do that. But thinking about this way, a lot of if you're teaching students and you're asking them to create an avatar or someone they want to talk to, and basically this person or this creature um, show in the room, that would be fun. And of course, like salespeople can use it, right? Um, to do demonstration, because visual ads sometimes can be really helpful and effective. And using, for, using it for presentation would be also fun, because Basically, except for me and my PowerPoint slides, I have another AR 3D object, object in the room with me to do the demonstration. So if you're using it to introduce some product, this would be really ideal in that sense. You can also using, use it to create games. So that would be some thought of it. Uh, you, so basically, people are using it now for create AR experience or game, um, also like classroom engagement, and some people use it as a marketing tool as well. How would you use this? Anyone have any idea right now? Yeah, I will give everybody like one or two minutes to think about this. Jenny said a guide. Yes, that's such a cool idea. You can definitely create a guide using this app or using the AR. Julia said, maybe they can pretend I'm actually in the course with them. That's also a good idea. I wish I can try be there for you guys instead of in the small box. Oh, if you're selling Michelin tires, you can sell them as the mascot. Well, that's also very interesting. It's like a really cool branding tool. I like that. That's very smart. Okay, I see everybody's trying to figuring something out with it. And basically, my role here is lead everybody into this VR, AR world that you have something after the session you can play with. So if you have any thought, don't think your idea might be not so great. Everybody's idea are really, really welcoming and great here. And it's, it's much fun than just me talking about, oh, you can do this and do that. 
All right, I think that's all the answers we got. Okay, next one. So this one is actually from a European company, and、uh, it also has a free version. So I try to collect as many free good ones, goodies for everybody.、Um, and this one, the function of this one is basically you can create AR or 3D object and let it show up in the room, in the physical room. Um, I don't know if anyone tried the Amazon AR that when you buy a furniture, you can use it. Basically, if you're buying a table, you can use the phone to see if the table fit into your room. Have everyone, anyone in the room tried it? If not, you can actually try it.、Uh, some of the furniture companies also has this function in their app. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I see someone tried it. Okay, so basically that's the idea with this app, but it's much more interesting.、Um, so here, using this app, you can create your own AR or three D object and let it show in a physical room or a physical space. So one application here is museum and art exhibitions can use it to do virtual art exhibitions.、Um, I'm not sure if anyone follows the fashion because this year and last year, Balenciaga actually、uh, did their fashion show in in VR goggle. So there's no model walk in the real runway. It's all down by the VR. So all the everyone, anyone who got invited, they just sit at home, put it on their goggle, and boom, they're in Paris. They're in the fashion week and they're watching the new runway show. So actually, in a lot of different field, the VR AR experience is already put into work, and、uh, some of the museums. I think MoMA just launched. If it's not hundred percent correct, because I don't remember if it's MoMA or Met. One of these museum actually launched their、um, VR virtual tool. So if you cannot physically be in the museum, you can wear、uh, your goggle, or they have a website version that you can take a three D tour to that museum. So, what do you think about this? I think if I cannot fly to, say, a museum in Paris, this might be a good experience for me. At least you know I can try. The new way to travel the world, exactly. Okay, so another way to use this AR creation or VR creation is use it for marketing and sales. So you can create, for example, you're selling a bottle of water, right? You're selling a bottle of water, and then you put this picture online. The user can just click. On this bottle of water and get all the information on this water. Also, you can put this water all of a sudden into your room. Of course, maybe put the water in your room doesn't make much sense, but if it's a lamp, then it makes sense. Another function here, I think so far I really like this function. It's making newspaper and magazine really move. If anyone watched Harry Potter, you know the newspaper in Harry Potter's world always move, right? The photos become live photo, and with AR, you don't need magic. With AR and VR, you can actually do that. Make all the newspaper move, and make all the magazines photo move. I like that idea.、Uh, obviously, I'm a Harry Potter fan, so. When I see that, I was very excited. And another thing I tried with this is this year I actually tried an invitation, an AR invitation. That once people open the invitation, they can see me in the room, inviting them to my party. Do you like that idea? 
as long as it's not creepy, right? I try to be welcoming and warm as possible, as much as possible. Okay. And also another application of this is you can use it for, of course, education and training. For example, like this. In the classroom, you can use it to build in a 3D model. For example, if you're a medical student, right? Mad school student, you can totally use this. And some of the engineer school can use this. Basically, if say um, the inside of aircraft, right? You can use it. You don't have to really go to a factory or something to see the real aircraft. You can just see it, see the inner stru structure of the aircraft inside a classroom. So those are some applications um, that you can use with this app. Sounds really fun, right? How would you use it? Would anyone want to try the AR invitation? or a greeting card. Jenny said, a safe learning space. It is. It is a safe learning space. Would anyone want to try this one, the overly? Oh, OK. Yeah, that's such a good idea for art learning. It's definitely really good for art learning. And for example, I would use it to teach culture. If I want everyone in the room right now to understand some of the Chinese culture or Chinese art piece, or see, say, the Chinese tea culture, right? I would definitely use the AR to create a sample of how would traditional Chinese people do their tea art, what's, what's the process in, right in front of you. I think that's much better than just watch a YouTube video. Mm -hmm. Thanks for Jenny and Juliet um, agree with me. Okay, the next one. Uh, I think this one, they have the free trial. So at least you can try if you like it. This one is from Adobe. Um, similar idea, but very easy application. You can create your 3D object and put, in, put it into your room right away, just like this. And it can move the way you want. So this one, I think it's very easy if you want to do some quick demonstration. And also it's interactive. For example, this rocket everybody see right now, if you're holding this iPad, you can actually move it around with your finger. Would anyone want to try this one? If, if for example, if I give everybody a homework to create your very first AR object, 3D object, what do you want to create? A pet. Oh, that's very cute. Yeah, so Julia said if she can create her very first 3D object, she wants to create a pet. That is very cute. And Ying says, a fountain inside my apartment. Whoa, fancy. All of a sudden, right? That's a very interesting idea. Now you said it, I'm actually a little bit curious to see if I have a fountain in my living room. I think a really interesting way to use this is if I do a teaching video and I combine the two, Right, I'm using an AR object in the room to teach and made it into a video. That's also a very interactive way. So recently I've been developing interactive videos for teaching. 
Um, and I actually would like to try the combination of using AR and the interactive video and see how it goes. Okay, no other saw with this one. Okay, another one I want to introduce is Adobe Sensei. So this one's also from Adobe. Um, it's very powerful, like it says. So this one, except for creating 3D object, you can actually use it to editing your video and basically you do half of work and then this software can finish the other half. For example, if I design a poster for the ATD conference, I type in ATD, I type in technology showcase, I type in some key element that I wanted there, for example, uh, a question mark, a light bulb, and then the software can basically finishing up the poster for me. So half and half work. In that sense, I think for a lot of us, especially a learning designer, it's really helpful because we don't have to struggle a lot to design everything, like all the pictures, all the videos. Um, and I try to use it to editing video, which is really, really helpful. Um, everything on the video, all the object that you don't want, you can remove it, use this app. It's more like, you can say it can be used as a Photoshop for your video. And you can make an interactive video with this app as well. Uh, it's a software, yeah, with it as well. And um, some company, actually, the e-commerce company, are using this for their, to generate their web page products. When you open any, say Amazon or any other um, e-commerce website, you, you see the demonstration of all their products, right? So using this software, once you create maybe five or 10 sample products and you upload all the pictures that you want, this basically the software can finish up the rest for you. So I think that one, in that sense is really helpful for a lot of content creator. So how many of you in today's um, session actually need to create photo, like pictures, posters? How many of you actually need to create videos? If you are, please type, what are you creating? Are you writing articles? Are you um, basically do a lot of PowerPoint slides? You need to do video editing, you need to do Photo editing, what are you using? Oh, Steven said videos and yes, PowerPoint slides. Okay. Oh, so for the people who are doing and Jenny animated videos. Yes, I do animated videos uh someone some sometimes as well. Okay. Um for animated video, this one can actually also be helpful. Seems like a lot of us need to do video editing, then I would recommend you guys to try this. And I think it has the free trial as well. So my point here is a lot of the um, apps or softwares I introduced today are free for you to try and we can get very creative with it. Not only use it for what it's supposed to use, we can use it for a very different purposes to engage and motivate learning. Because right now, right before the pandemic, um, I used to teach. So I started to teach online probably like 10 years ago. And in the beginning, not a lot of people teach online. It's sort of a new, new thing for the learner. And right now, after 2020, right now, people are already getting tired of Zoom session, um, and all the online teaching, even hybrid mode, people start to get tired of it because it's too much. So I want everyone to think about how I can make a classroom. No wonder, it, no matter it's in-person session or online session or hybrid mode, how can I 
take everybody's attention? How can I engage everyone? How can I make everybody feels more lively and excited in the classroom? So, is anyone here、um, have the same feeling with me that you have a little bit online learning fatigue? If you are, type yes. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. Thank you. I see a lot of people type yes, and Jenny said yes, but still like it. That's awesome. We are sort of like getting used to learning online, um, and it's not temporary. It will be come part. It will become part of our learning for a very long time. And more and more universities are offering hybrid mode program, online and offline.、Um, even sometimes when we are in session right now, just like everybody who are sitting in the room right now are watching me、um, in another room through video. So online learning become part of our learning, and using different tools can definitely promote the learning outcome. Especially when I、uh, used to teach, some of my sessions have more than twenty k students live.、Um, sometimes it's one on one, so online teaching can be very challenge challenging when your audience, the number changes, the age changes,、uh, the topic changes. So that's why throughout the years I keep. Thinking, how can I promote different way of learning? Okay, so after this session, would anyone tr- want to try to use this tool, the Adobe Sensei? <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of people say, "I'm yeah," and of course, okay. Thanks for everybody's answer and participating.、Um, and right now, I also have a list of VR apps that you can try after today's session. Also, you can find me on LinkedIn if you have any further discussion、um, that you want to discuss with me. So you can scan here and then join me on LinkedIn. So all these VR tools you can try for free. You can just take a screenshot, so that would be very easy. And some of them I tried; it's fun. Some of them I don't think it's fully there, but I want everybody to experience some good ones, some normal ones, some not so great ones. Just give you a sense where we are. Okay, and another because I don't want to talk too much technical stuff in our session. I want to be fun. I want to be interactive. I want to know how you guys feel, and of course, I want you guys to have some takeaway. So this is another screenshot for you that how can you choose the right AR and VR software. So I listed all the key features that you need to focus or when you pick. Cause there's so much out there, and there will be more and more coming. So when you pick your AR and VR tool, you can follow the features and see which features are the ones you want. So take a screenshot. This is your checklist. You don't have to check all of them, cause I don't think a lot of the tools right now have all these function. But check the key features that you want. And after today's session, you can try all the tools that I introduced today and match up with this key feature list. And you would know this basically can give you a sense that how would you use it in different setting and what kind of features you need for your learning design. Yes. Okay, I think we have a five minutes here. If anyone has any question, you can type in to the chat box and ask me any question that you want to know about today's topic. And 
um, while you're reading this checklist. And I encourage everybody to take a screenshot to keep this. And later, when you want to explore more AR, VR, AI tools by yourself, you can uh, use this as a reference. Thanks, Jenny. It's, oh, and someone said this is very fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Serene. Sorry earlier that my microphone was just not working. It was dead and we had this weird transition, but this is amazing. There's so much information here that it's almost overwhelming to kind of think of, oh, all the things that we can play with and try and test. Um, I'm kind of curious from the audience, like, if we had Serene like do something for us and demo something for us, like what would you guys want to see her try? I mean, I'm I'm trying to steal more of her time one day, but I yeah, think were so you cool. yes among all these were like yeah, what are you guys very interested, be intrigued if you want to try, or is there any of those you would definitely first try after the session? Oh, we have some good questions too. Oh, okay. Let's see. Okay, so first, what sort of analytics can be captured with AR, VR? Um, for example, with the Amazon app, when you try different table in different rooms, actually, every time you try, it generates the data how many people tried with that kind of table that day in their room. So basically, only the people who has the interest to buy it would try, right? So it, it generates the marketing data for that table, how many people tried in their room. But after the try, do they really buy it? So if after the try, they actually bought it, that means this really helps. But if after the try, they didn't buy it, it's either the app is not working well or the table is not good enough. So it's a feedback for the, the uh, producer or someone who designed the desk. Um, Jenny said, I have just started a 10 week VR development course. Amazing stuff. Oh, wow. Sounds really fun. Jenny, you're going to have to share with us after your 10 weeks. What yeah. You did. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you would definitely learn some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. How about from the um, conference room? Anyone ever use AR, VR, AI? Anything that you liked? Yes? No? Yeah? Thumbs up. Anyone likes AR? You can, you can talk. You can talk. So, I was doing games. It was really cool. I like to see it. Like, just how far you can push like that. That integration, it's like for like separation from reality and, and digital. So and like they had it set up to where like the entire thing was like kind of like moving and you're driving a car, there's a car simulator. So you have the wheel, you have the pedals, and you could feel all the kickback and all that stuff in the yard. So it was like really cool and it was really emergent too. So like, I really like it. So like the set of cost was like thirty thousand dollars and so it's like the price of a real car to do. So it's like it's a little expensive, so <laughs> Like so that was like a total test driving car situation? Yeah, oh my goodness. Wow. I was going to mention that I think one of the ongoing things that like at tech demos and such, we keep on we keep on bumping into like AR and VR being the future and I've tried out a couple things. I think that the biggest thing that's disconcerting for me as a student is that if this is the direction we go, the price tag for a lot of people is a real issue, especially with VR headsets. Mm -hmm. um, even with like some of the accessibility for, uh, for phones and such, there's still like proper V capital V VR. It's still so financially inaccessible to mm -hmm. the majority of the population and mm -hmm. for businesses. I don't know how you can justify like spending so much money on that for tech companies. That's that's a very very good thing you brought it up. So actually, I was thinking the same thing this day uh, before the session. That's why for the VR 
tool. I only listed here. I didn't introduce any of them. And for the all the AR one are free. And as long as you have a phone or a tablet, you can play with. Because just like you said, if you want to tr try VR, uh, you need the goggle. And not everyone can buy the goggle right now. So that's something that I thought about it as well. Um, and for the car situation, um, actually some of the airplane company is using VR simula simulation to train their pilot. I don't know how you guys feel about this. Uh, the first time I heard about this, I am a little bit scared. I don't know if the pilot is trained by the simulation. Uh, how would I feel about the safety or the sense of security to get on that airplane? Thanks. Yeah, it's too bad that um, a couple of years ago, we had a, a sponsor, SAS, that satellite company, who uh, let us come into their facilities and see how they run the satellites um, around the world. And they actually use VR to train, you know, for fixing satellites mm -hmm, in space mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, so it, you know, obviously highly you know, inaccessible equipment, training around the world, that kind of thing. Pharmaceuticals is used leveraging VR for a lot of it too. Um, so, so it depends, I guess, on mm -hmm. what your business is, that it's, it's lucrative to go that way in training. I actually had the chance to talk uh, with a bunch of VR developers and engineers. So before, the first generation of VR goggles are very expensive. And right now they're making it more and more affordable. I think before it was like among a thousand dollar to three thousand dollar a pair. And if it's HoloLens um, from Microsoft, that's like a half half. Basically, you can see the VR world and the real world combined. That one is fancy, but very expensive. And right now the Oculus Go is one hundred ninety nine. And I think the next generation, a lot of people are working on just using people's phone to generate VR. Yes, so that will make VR more accessible if that technology is available at everyone's on everyone's phone. Cool. Maybe we all can get something going someday soon. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows what what this uh, technology showcase will will spur us to do? So, thank you, Serene, for your time and all of the wonderful information. I hope you all thought of something new to, to try and um, we'll keep updated with Serene and let us know if you're doing anything new so that we can test it out with our um, with our folks too. Mm -hmm. So I think that we're we have a, oh like Recording we're gonna run stopped. into our next um, speaker. Right? Is Peter here? Hi Peter. Oh, can we hear 